Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Odd and Untold. This is episode 24. Once again, I'm being joined by my friend, John. And uh, before we jump in, I just want to talk, because you and I have talked about the numbers game before, and this is episode 24. And oh. you and I have talked about this, and you know why 24 is significant for you, because you were born on the 24th of June. And uh, we've talked about this before, that apparently that date, which is also John the Baptist Day, which yes. you're named after, but apparently that day is like the most paranormal day of the year, like UFO sightings, Bigfoot sightings. Uh, if you kind of do a graph, most of the, and we've talked about this years ago, I think Lauren Coleman in one of his books mentioned this, uh, that it's and like- I have most to say boring. that I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> no, because this, this has been going on since before you were born. Right. But um, yeah, so I just thought that was interesting. I was thinking about that before, like, oh, episode 24 and John's on and um, just a little a little bit of synchronicity there uh, to mention before we get into tonight's episode, because uh, I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, now I have to mention, uh, I did not know you were going to bring that up. Uh, I knew this was the 24th episode because I've been following you, of course, I'm a fan. Um, but I didn't even make the connection to that being my birthday. And I I know that you have talked about it before that it is um it's a highly unusual day or I should say it's a day where highly unusual things have happened in, over the course of history. Um, maybe it has something to do with the fact the calendar has kept has changed over these last thousands of years, from uh, the Julian to the Gregorian, you know, depending on whether you're using a, a solar or lunar calendar, um, maybe it has something to do with the fact that it's the summer solstice, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, so much, uh, I know of the things that we've talked about, that the earth is a big magnet, and we talk about magnetic tape and things like that, and sounds or images getting caught because of that, who knows? I mean, I don't know. I'm certainly not a scientist. That is not my forte. Um, I'm just open and skeptical at the same time. And I think you understand that better better than anybody. Oh, definitely. You know, I think that's one of the reasons that we get along so well. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's yeah, you have to be skeptical, but you also have to be open. You can't be closed-minded, but you can't just accept everything as fact. So it's just, it's one of those uh, interesting correlations uh, just little tidbits of things that you're like, you know, of course, unusual stuff happens every day of the year, but most right. popular or, you know, recorded strange events, like I said, it could be UFOs, it could be ghosts, it could be uh, Bigfoot sightings, Loch Ness Monster sightings. These things all kind of track towards June 24th being the most popular day for these things to be reported on. So uh, I thought about that earlier and I, I meant to bring it up to you off air and I totally forgot. I just remembered when I was saying episode 24. So sorry to spring that on you, but <laughs> yeah. And uh, in no way affiliated with a TV show of the same name. Right. <laughs> and a personal shout out to Mindy Kaling, who I'm sure is not watching this podcast, but if she ever does big fan, Mindy, uh, great work. And, uh, we share a birthday. Oh, do you? Yeah, we do. Oh, interesting. I just found that out recently. So that's cool. Interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully she'll see the show. I certainly hope so. <laughs> oh, speaking of, uh, did you want to mention your new microphone there? Oh, yeah. I may sound a little different this week, everybody, because I upgraded to a Yeti Blue microphone, which is a very popular microphone. Uh, it's not strictly for paranormal podcasts. I didn't buy it because it's a Yeti, but it is a Yeti. So hopefully I sound a little better, a little less echoey. I just, I had another microphone that was fine. I just never quite liked the sound of it. And I like this one a lot better. Um, I actually reached out to Ethan because on what, my, my episode with him, he sounded phenomenal. Like he just sounded, like he could walk away from the microphone and it would still just sound like he was talking right into it. And I asked him about it and he said he, it was a Sennheiser and I, I was very close to buying that one. And then I saw this one and I said, eh, let, let me go for this one. Because I think this one had the USB, whereas I don't know if the Sennhauser oh. had a USB. I would have had to go like, yeah. um, it's got the regular microphone, which the name escapes me right now, the, that cord, 
we used to use them all the time in the studio when we would practice and stuff. I forget the name of the, the, anyway, this one was just a little bit more user-friendly and it had a plug in for my headphones. So I said, ah, let me go with the Yeti. And I know a lot of other people use the Yeti. So thanks, Ethan. I appreciate the advice, but I went a different way. No, no, no offense. He uh, loves those microphones. I actually have an extra one that I'm not using at all. So if you're interested, but it doesn't have that plug-in that you're talking about. So yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I just I this one actually just came today, I think. Oh, nice. Yeah, like earlier today. So uh, I tested it out earlier. I liked how it sounded. So I said, yeah, I'm gonna start using this. It's so. it's certainly the perfect microphone for this type of podcast. Yeah, Yeti can't can't go wrong. <laughs> you cannot go wrong, and you can't no. make this stuff up. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So very cool. Hope hope it sounds better than it have in the past. You um, always sound great, and you sound continually great today. So thank you, my friend. <laughs> Anytime. Uh, all right. So let's uh, now that that's out of the way. My little bit of trivia, June twenty fourth trivia. Um, you're back on the show again. You have stories, many stories, and uh, this is one that I've known about for a long time, and I never thought you would want to share it again because I remember at the time it happened, it was it was not something that was pleasant. It was not. Uh, I mean, even me just thinking about it, put putting myself in the situation. I don't like being in that situation because, no. uh, and and I say on the podcast a lot that uh, you know most paranormal experiences are fleeting uh they're subtle you know you're hearing a f what you think is a footstep you're hearing what you think is right. a voice uh it, and it's very rare to sort of get corroboration to get something ongoing but th this this is like a really cool story so i definitely want to hear this one i'm so glad you're going to share this with everybody so without further ado i'll, I'll turn it over to you and you can start telling your, your tale here okay this is um I didn't think I would ever tell the story either, frankly. The other two stories that, that um, we've talked about on the show, you and I have talked about them actually a lot. Right. You know, this one, I told you once, and I never wanted to talk about it again. So I don't think you've heard it. And this happened 21 years ago. So I think the last time you heard it was really literally when it happened 21 years ago. So I'm going to jump way back to 2001. Mm -hmm. And in 2001, uh, I was living with my girlfriend at the time. And uh, you know how those things go. Um, lovely girl. Uh, things didn't work out and we broke up. But I think I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let me go back. We were living together at the time at one of the two Bay Ridge apartments that we talk about all the time, obviously not yours. This was the one that your, your family owns on. Um, and it must be like 20, 30 blocks down, but right. you know, similar area. Uh, and I was living there with her and we had a cat. I love that cat. His name was Ariel. It means lion of God. Great name for a cat. I thought everyone says the little mermaid, but no, it means lion of God. So it's actually a better name for a cat than it is for a mermaid. Um, and we also had a dog, a beautiful little cavalier King Charles Spaniel uh, by the name of Sashi. Love that little dog. So much energy, so much life. And we were all living together in that little apartment. And as you said, you were very fond of, of saying that uh, they fought literally like cats and dogs as you might imagine they would run around and they would chase each other and they would you know it would start off with one of them getting the zoomies you know as soon as the sun went down and they just went back and forth back and forth back and forth and and it was a lot of fun until it got to be too much so anyway one night and late in 2001 um and you know of course 2001 um and the, this happened in the summer, actually, right before uh, the terrible events in, on September 11th. Um, and again, it was a sort of hot day. Oh, wait, actually, I said that it was in three parts. Let me do the three parts before I, I get off track. Okay. So uh, my girlfriend, we will call her Victoria, uh, for because I don't, you know, she's entitled to her privacy. And this is 
a, sh a shared story between her and I. Um, she, her family was from an island in the Caribbean. And she told me that she remembers this very vivid event happening when she was a little girl involving her grandmother. Her grandmother had a dispute with a neighbor and this had been going on like a feud for actually several years. And she saw one time her grandmother was talking to her neighbor and she got very angry and she became very expressive. And Victoria related to me that she heard her mother speaking, her grandmother, excuse me, she heard her grandmother speaking in a language that she could not identify. You know, it wasn't English, it wasn't Spanish, it wasn't any language that she had ever heard. And she said that the neighbor reacted very poorly, like he got scared, he backed away and he left. So that's the first part of the story. And there was um, a second part in that she also told me that her grandmother was interested in, uh, shall we say, non-traditional religions. And she could never really specify what that was because she was really a little girl when she spent time with her grandmother and her grandmother had since passed and she didn't really get too many details, but she, she knew that there was something non-traditional. And I mean that in a completely non-judgmental way. It wasn't, um, Christianity or, you know, any, any of the more traditional religions that we have in the world today. Uh, Victoria told me that she was always really attracted to a doll that her grandmother owned. And this doll uh, had curly hair and a blue taffeta dress. And I think the, the strangest part about it was that she had two castanets. And she, Victoria always said that she was really interested in a doll. She re, she always really liked it, but that it was one of her grandmother's prized possessions. Okay, now fast forward, she's an adult, I'm an adult, we're living together. And she tells me the story. And so just, just to pause for a second, can we just explain to people who don't, who may not know what castanets are? I'm sure a lot of people do, but there's probably some people out there who, who oh. aren't, because it's very important to the story. Sure, it's a, it's a, they're basically meant, as, used as a percussion instrument, and it's basically just two sort of rounded pieces of wood that you click together. And you can do different rhythms with it. And, you know, uh, they usually come in a pair. And so that was one of, um, they came with a doll. I mean, they were attached. Not that I ever examined the doll, but we'll get, we'll get to that in a second. Um, and she always said that she was interested. Now, when I became involved with uh, Victoria, she became very interested in Wicca. And she was reading a lot of books and just searching for um, a spirituality where she felt comfortable, you know, looking into lots of different things. And she mentioned to me the story and we were talking about it, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And I didn't, re I never really focused on the part of the story that involved the doll, which is just that she liked it, and we never really talked about that. We talked more about the transformation that she saw her grandmother go through that day. It wasn't a physical transformation. It was just something in the sound of her voice, the tone, the timbre of her voice, and the language that she could not identify. So... At some point, she mentions it to her mother and father, you know, and they said, oh, we have the doll. They kept it in storage after the grandmother passed. And Victoria was very interested. And she said, oh, that's interesting. I, you know, I didn't know that it's, it was still around. So a few months pass and... <laughs> We go over to their house one night and they have the doll and they present it to her. And this is the first time that where I enter the story for real, because I see it and it is a, it's a very interesting looking doll. Um, about three feet, you know, it was actually, no, not three, I'm sorry, two feet. 
in size, curly hair, blue taffeta dress with the castanets. And I have to tell you, I felt very uneasy about it from the get-go, from the very first time I saw it. And uh, to, the, to this day, I have never held it. But again, we'll get to that part of the story a little bit later. So anyway, so she brings it home. And she, put, she puts it in the corner of the living room. And I could not look at it. Anytime I passed by the living room, I would intentionally not look at the thing because it gave me the creeps, as you might imagine. Um, so I just avoided looking at it every time it came across it. Well, in 2001, over the summer, uh, Victoria and I, one night, we just went to bed. Very normal. No, I mean, nothing unusual about the day at all. And of course, we were living with the cat and we were living with the dog at the time. So everybody piles onto the bed. <laughs> you know, it's the four of us in that uh, queen size bed. And we just turned out the light. Everyone is very clearly awake and just trying to get comfortable as you do when you get into bed. And we hear a sound. Uh, we hear a sound coming from the living room, which which was uh, the bedroom. There was a um, bathroom in between and then the living room. And we hear a sound and we all sort of perked up. And it was interesting because um, she was involved in that incident at your house that I relayed in a previous podcast uh, about the door opening, the porch door opening. She was there, but she slept through it. So this is one of the few times where it wasn't just me who experienced something. It was me, it was her, and it was the dog and the cat. So we all hear something very strange going on in the living room, which basically sounded like um, a sort of rustling, but very particular type of, well, I'll just say it, it sounded like taffeta on the hardwood floor, just rustling over it. And a little click, 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 of the castanets. Now, I don't know what this was. I am not saying that anything other than what we heard. So I picked my head up, Victoria picked her head up, and the dog and the cat also lifted their heads and we all looked towards the door, which led out to the living room. And uh, I think you remember my dog and my cat. Mm -hmm. They were very curious. If they heard something, they would run immediately to it. They heard the sound. All of us are looking towards the door. Then they look at us. You know, there's enough light from the streetlights. They look at us. And then they look back at the door. And we hear this rustling back and forth, back and forth, because the living room extended beyond um, our bedroom on the outside. And you could hear it basically going back and forth, back and forth with a little click, 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 click. Nobody moves. The dog and the cat, nobody moves. We're just listening to it until it stops. We don't say anything. And then eventually we start to calm down, relax. And I guess one by one, we fall asleep. Now, the next day, we do not talk about this story while we're in the apartment. We do, at some point, talk about it outside. And we're like, what was that? And it was very clear. It's like, you heard it? You heard it? It's like, yes, we all heard it, including the dog and the cat, that something was going on out there. And we never came to a satisfactory conclusion to what it was. But for two humans and two uh, two of our, of our friendly mammals as well, heard something out there, which basically sounded like the doll was going back and forth, clicking the castanets. I am not saying that's what it was. I'm saying that's what it sounded like. Now, as I said, uh, Victoria, lovely, lovely girl. We break up for, you know, as couples do when you're young and foolish. And she moves away and she moves to Manhattan and I don't see her for about a year. Um, but as a, 
as you know, we were sharing um, the the dog and the cat. I had the cat and she took the dog. Um, and I love that little dog and I wanted to visit it, you know, and to have some closure with her as well about the relationship and things that went wrong and, you know, people made mistakes, you know, whatever. So I contacted her and I went over to her apartment one day and um, she went to the bathroom and I was alone in the living room and I was looking at her TV because that was still 2000, at that point it was 2003, the very beginning of 2003, and there were still blockbusters and she had a bunch of movies, a bunch of movies by the TV stand. So I go over there and it's kind of a, a an old design for a TV stand because the TV is there, but there's also two very large cabinets on the side of it and they meet with a bridge over it. And I was walking towards the TV until I froze. Like I didn't move. I didn't know why I didn't move, but I stopped moving. Like in mid track, I just stopped. And then I took a step back. I didn't know why, but I felt very uneasy. So she and I, we go out to dinner and I asked her about the doll because I didn't see the doll. I didn't see it. It, it wasn't out. And she said, oh, I put it in, uh, in one of the two cabinets by the TV. And the very uh, one of them, particularly that I was approaching when I stopped, it was like sort of instinctual. I stopped as if I had seen some or I sensed some sort of danger. And I just said, okay. And I stepped back away from it. You know, that's what you do. If you see a dangerous animal, you back away from it very slowly. And that's precisely what I did. And then over dinner, as I said, we discussed it. And that's where she was keeping the doll. And I have not told this story to you since it happened. Yeah. And I mean, that, that you know, I think the imagery inherent in the story is just far more disturbing than like just hearing it, you know, like you're, you're hearing these sounds, but you, you know, in your mind, you got to be like, is this doll just dancing on the floor in my living room by itself and castanets? I, I don't, I don't have any sound clips pulled up, but anybody can go on Google and just pull up like what castanets sound like. They're very, yeah, they're very distinct. Like, you know, what castanets sound like it's you know not something like. right. And it's not something you're going to hear in a brooklyn apartment building uh especially with my family you know everybody yeah. else in the building renting at the time was my family mm -hmm. and you know white as can be <laughs> you know there's no no latin american sort of influence in there like there no none of them have castanets none of them are going to be playing castanets at whatever time this was you guys went to bed uh i knew both of your pets uh Ariel, I remember the first time I met Ariel, I came over and uh, you were warning me like he doesn't like people. He's aggressive. He's, you know, don't get too close. He's going to bite you. And like you went into the kitchen or something to get like some drinks and you came out and he's just like in my lap, like purring and like rubbing himself against me. And and I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, big, big, bad, tough guy. You yeah. know? But he yeah. was he was uh, overall he was a very uh, he was a cat, you know. Uh, not afraid of anything and and then sashi who and he and he basically he liked who he liked right like with me uh anytime i left the room he would follow me wherever right. i went even if he was asleep and if i was going back and forth between rooms he would he would even voice his displeasure he would grumble he like, rrr, rrr. <laughs> but he would still come with me because that's you know he liked who he liked and right. other people had to be careful but you know he really liked you and that right. was it Right. And Sashi, I, I remember I puppy sat for her a few times when you guys yeah. first got her. Yeah. Uh, typical kind of young dog. Uh, and again, like kind of like you've seen the cartoons where the cat's always kind of like the 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 serious conniving, yes. uh, you know, smart one. And the dog is always just the, the big dopey, you know, hey, what's going on? And so so for both of your animals, because because Ariel was the lion you know uh, not really afraid of anything and sashi was 
the puppy who wasn't smart enough to be afraid of anything. Yeah, uh, bless her soul. She was right. Oh, she was so sweet. But she was right. She's she had that puppy energy. And the thing about Cavaliers that they always say, and if, if anyone's watching and you have a Cavalier, you know, you're not supposed to keep them off leash because they're prone to running off. And especially when she was a puppy, she did that all the time. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, definitely. And and to have both of them just looking at the door at the sound you know the door leading to the living room and then looking back at you guys is almost as if to say like please help us what is going on uh and and again you know when when you live in a place you know you know the sounds of your your home the sounds of your apartment you know like oh that's the heat coming <clears throat> excuse me that's the heat coming on that's mm-hmm. the house settling that's whatever that's mrs so-and-so upstairs uh, none yeah, of that's going to sound fam- like ca- castanets, you know, like, yeah, it was your family. I knew everybody in, in the apartment above me, below me, across from me. I knew everybody and it wasn't a TV. It wasn't the heat coming on, uh, the pipes banging and the steam heat. Like I know those sounds. We all knew those sounds. And like I said, it was the summertime. The heat would not be coming on. Right. There would be no no radiator steam. There would be no banging of pipes. It wouldn't be anything like that. I, I I always knew who was watching TV and basically what they were watching because it was just that type of place. And it was nothing like that. Right. And I mean, I, I grew up in that building, you know, not I didn't live there, but I spent lots of time there. Yeah. I know those doors, those front doors are heavy doors. Like no one could have gotten into your apartment without you hearing like that's just an impossibility uh those were big heavy brooklyn doors um the doors were heavier than the the walls yeah (laughs) you can hear above and below just not through the wall through the door right right uh so the doll and again you you didn't see it so you're just assuming you know because you're hearing castanets and you have one item in your house that has castanets on it and it's wearing a taffeta dress and you're hearing a dress move. And again, all those floors in there, the old, the really nice old hardwood floors. Like that's yeah. an, it's an old building. I think it was uh, 1928. It was built. If I remember. Yeah, I, I thought it was even older, but it was something like that. Definitely. Yeah. I think, I think it was built in 1928. Building, as they say. You right. Know. But definitely hardwood floors every, you know, throughout and uh, to well, hear. Actually they were all, sorry. They were all, covered up um originally with carpeting uh and i took them out to expose the hardwood floor which was beautiful and the carpets had actually kept them nice and new and uh it's funny that you mentioned that because i i i I just had a memory the other day of us being in in brooklyn on like third avenue genovese renting a carpet cleaner because I, I think the previous owner before you moved in he had cats and the cats yeah. had like peed everywhere so the whole place yeah. just smelled like cat urine oh, and i remember oh. we shampooed those carpets yep for like three nights in a row and would like leave the windows open we'd go out to eat mm-hmm. we'd come back and it still smelled and yeah i forgot that you ripped up those cars I, I remember there was hard wood there like more recently yeah. but i i just remembered yeah that we shampooed those carpets to yeah. the jesus and back and was no I, was, I wasn't going to bring it up, but yeah, that, that's why I took them out because right. we tried, we really tried and it didn't work. Yeah. So I just pulled them up and it's like, oh, look at this beautiful floor underneath. And I never replaced them uh, until I was forced to in the two bedrooms, mm-hmm. you know, because um, I forget who, but somebody wanted me to cover it because it was too noisy. Like I said, you could hear above and below. Right, right. In the living room, we never did that. And that's where we heard the sound. Mm-hmm. So this doll, you, you mentioned that you were kind of freaked out by it from day one. Did yeah. it have a particular look about it? Or was it more just a feeling for you? Uh, it, it looked actually really, really harmless. Uh, it wasn't a creepy doll. It wasn't, I've never seen the movie Annabelle. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I know all the advertisements for Annabelle. And that is a creepy doll. In fact, uh, right after we did a previous co- podcast, I watched The Conjuring for the first time. You know, I had never seen it until like two weeks ago. And I didn't know that Annabelle was featured in that. Sorry for the spoiler. Only in the beginning. Uh, but I didn't know 
that she was featured in it. And I didn't, you know, I don't like that sort of thing. So I had avoided <laughs> watching those other movies. I didn't know that she was going to be in this movie. Uh, it honestly, it looked more like what you will find these days as an American girl doll. Oh, really? It, 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 it might have been like uh, done after um, a little girl who had curly hair, like Victoria, like brown skin, like Victoria, in uh, a very old-fashioned blue taffeta dress with the castanets. So it wasn't creepy looking at all. It was just the feeling that I got the first time I saw it. And even that last time, I never went back after uh, seeing Victoria for that time, that, that one time. I never went back. And I didn't even see the doll that time, but I felt something. And that's why, like I said, I backed away and I never wanted, I never wanted to see that thing ever again. So I, it was a very strange experience. Yeah. I don't blame you. And, and, you know, people are going to ask, <laughs> why didn't you guys get up and go look? Uh, and I think that's very brave of people to say when it's not happening to them if they're listening to the podcast and you know two in the afternoon or in the comfort of their own home where there is no doll with castanets uh and, and i think you and i had kind of discussed this when you first told me the story of like you know if you had seen it and i, I i'm trying to remember the words that you use because you you had told me this like if you did get up and see it you would have lost like lost your mind like you yeah. would have just gone insane like something out of a stephen king short story of just you know whatever yeah. logic and intelligence you had would have just been blasted away like yeah. to see this doll even even if it wasn't moving at the time like just to be out of its corner to just be on the floor in the living yeah. room yeah. like even if it wasn't currently moving as you saw it like yeah it moved and yeah. then yeah the castanets that not only you heard not only your girlfriend heard but the two animals living with you heard how, how do you process that you know it's just um so i don't blame you for not getting up and looking again people will ask so i had to ask the question like why sure. didn't you but at the same time who wants to see that you know you're hearing it and you're just kind of like okay it went away i'm gonna go to sleep now because i gotta go to work in the morning and i will deal with it in the light of day and yeah. uh it, it has stopped thankfully it stopped and let's leave it be for now uh so yeah, really, really creepy story. And I remember that, that was, you know, I remember all your stories mainly because a lot of them you've told me multiple times. This one, it's hard to forget because it's got that sort of oral component of the, the castanets, which is a very distinct sound. And it's, uh, you know, you tell somebody you heard a voice or you heard a growl or you heard a scream, you know, everyone's going to interpret that differently. What did the scream sound like? Castanets sound like a castanet, you know, like it, it's very distinct and, to just imagine that picturing that doll just dancing across your floor, like come see me. And then you didn't. So it's like, okay, well, I'm going to go back to my spot in the corner. You know, you, we've been friends for a long time. You're my oldest friend. In fact, you know that um, I'm very, like I'm a spiritual guy. Like uh, I believe in the greater forces of the universe, you know, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I believe in possibilities. You know that I also have a critical and skeptical mind. And we all heard what we heard and no one got up to go out there. Now, the adage is true that curiosity, good, good God, curiosity <laughs> could have killed my cat. God knows what he would have seen when he went out there and he would have lost his mind. But um, I remember one time um, I forget what it was exactly. We were in the bedroom and he heard something. I think it was the heat coming on and it was the first time that he was there mm -hmm. and he didn't know what, what it was, you know? So he's on the other side of the bed and he did the funniest thing I've ever seen him do. He stood up on his hind legs to look over the bed, the <laughs> other side, rather than even looking underneath or going around, he stood up on his hind legs like this to see what was over. So <laughs> funny, so full of personality. So he was curious, but also kind of cautious. 
And it got his attention and he didn't go out there. And, you know, with Sashi at that point, being a puppy, she would, any little noise, she would just run after it. And neither one of them budged. They looked, they looked at us. And then they looked back at the sound. And we just all waited for it to stop. And um, if anyone is watching this in the, the previous podcast, I said, uh, I was waiting for the sun to come up in both of those instances. And that's precisely what I was doing this time. It's like, okay, we can't do anything about it. Let the sun come up and we'll deal with it in the morning. And of course, in the morning, nothing had been moved. And you're right. Uh, I, I love that you remember that detail. I did say <laughs> I would lose my mind. Yeah. Even if it was out of its corner, because how did it get out of its corner? Uh, if I had actually gone out there and seen something, I really, I don't know how I would have reacted. And I'm glad that I didn't see anything to this day. And I'm glad that I've never seen the doll since. It's like 20 years now. Yeah. I never touched it. And like I said, even getting close to it that one last time, without seeing it, I backed away from it. And before before I forget, I, I mentioned this like two episodes ago. I, I was talking about something similar, just with, with me and my dog Belle. And you, you knew Belle. She was yeah. a Shih Tzu and, and very similar sort of personality to Sashi and, and just dopey and fun and playful yeah. and not not a mean bone in her body. She wouldn't growl. She never bark. You know, little dogs sometimes are yippy right. and they bark and they bark and she never barked. She never growled. Uh, and she followed me everywhere. She was attached mm -hmm. to me, you know. And I was telling the story about how one night I was home alone and Janine had been somewhere. I don't know where she was, but she wasn't with me. And it was just, you know, me and Belle are in bed. And she gets up and is looking at the front door to the apartment and <laughs> is is growling. This, you know, um, not barking, but just growling. And yeah. she was clearly seeing something. She was clearly afraid. And I'm like, anyone in the house, she would know. She wouldn't be growling at them. I said, but let me get up and go anyway. And I went to the front door and I checked. And again, I wasn't hearing anything. If if I heard castanets, I wouldn't have checked. But I didn't hear or see anything. But she's growling. And I, I kind of went to just be like, look, there's nothing here. And I went to the door and I'm calling for her. And she would not come off the bed. Yeah. Um, and again, just completely out of character for her, just like your, your two animals, you know, yeah. just not checking it out, not being curious, just being like, what the fuck is there? And again, I checked, nobody had come upstairs. There was no lights on. It wasn't my brother. It wasn't my grandfather. There was nobody there, but she was just growling and it took her a while to kind of settle down afterwards. So you telling that part again, which I remembered, but not, not fully about your animals kind of just noticing and looking at you guys and also just being like, what the hell is going on? Like, what yeah. is that? Um, Cause again, I, you, you kind of feel like if someone had come in, they would react differently. If it yeah. were a person, if it was something they, they knew. Uh, so I, I thought that was interesting. And, and I always think it's interesting when animals react with us, you know, and any experience, you know, anything you have on your own, you can easily say, I was hearing things. I was seeing things. Uh, Half sleep, dreaming, any number of different things. Right, right. Or I misheard it. You know, I heard something yeah. and and to me it sounded like this. And if no one else hears it, like, who knows? You know, but if, if you have another human being hearing it and you have two animals hearing it and you're all reacting to it, that is freaky. And yeah. uh, I, I don't blame you. And, and again, like we can get into this another time, but. I'll have to have some of my family members on, but I, I have had family members in that building who've had experiences um, to run it down quickly. They've been tapped on the shoulder. They've seen apparitions. Uh, there's a cool story I want to tell. I might see if I can get my dad on to tell it because it, it happens yeah. around Christmas, but we, you and I were talking about like Christmas yeah. horror movies and stuff. So I do want to do some Christmas themed episodes, but yeah. there's something that would happen every Christmas. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't figure it out. And I'll save yeah. the story, but save it's the story. a cool story. Yeah. But it happened in this building because, again, that was yeah. like my dad's side of the family, whereas my apartment was like my, my mother's side of the family. But uh, it it's not a building where you're the only one to have experienced stuff. Uh, right. My great-grandfather, my great-grandmother, 
numerous cousins, my uncle, my father, my aunt, like everybody who's lived in that building has had their own experiences. And, yeah. you know, for you to have experiences there too, is, is like really not surprising. Um, mm. and even like when I've told my cousins, they're like, oh yeah, I, you know, I saw stuff there too. <laughs> so it's just, oh, um, great. Yeah. And it just makes you wonder about, and, and this is a good lead up to what we were kind of talking about, uh, off air. Uh, cause you and I were sort of talking about how we have a lot of stories, uh, not met, not, a, not a ton, but we have, uh, you know, we've been doing, this is our third show together and we, we have a few more to do. Uh, but most of our stories are sort of confined to certain times and places. Yeah. And we mentioned off air that a lot of this kind of happened within a 10 year period, like yeah, middle of high school to like mid twenties. So like 16 yeah. to 26 or 28, you know, 10, 12 years always either happened at my apartment in Brooklyn, your place in Brooklyn. <laughs> um, one other girlfriend's house, which again, we can get that into that story another time if you want, because those are some pretty cool stories too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, kind of like high school, college, first job, yeah. that time, that time period, and uh, places, you know. Uh, and I've mentioned this on the podcast before too about myself that people will sometimes say, "Oh, well, you're you're into the paranormal, so you're just seeing it everywhere." And that is the furthest thing from the truth because I've lived multiple places now. You've lived in multiple places, and most other places I've had nothing happen. Yeah. Uh, and if something did happen, it's one of those things where it's not quite a story. You're just kind of like, Oh, that was weird. And it happened once and never again. So you, you kind of throw it away. You're not saying, Oh, here's like just these consistent stories that keep happening at 68th street or at your apartment in Bay Ridge or uh, whatever, you know, but anywhere else I've lived, it's been quiet nothing ever happens like i don't experience things yeah. so again if if someone wants to say oh you're just you're expecting this uh because it's on your mind and you're interested in it it's really not because it's not on my mind constantly i'm not you know despite having the podcast and whatever you know I, i'm not constantly thinking paranormal stuff yeah. and if i were you'd think that it would follow me to every new house or apartment or wherever i lived and, and it, it hasn't. didn't. It hasn't. And same for you. You know, right. we, we keep telling these stories and it's 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 22 right. years ago. I don't have stories from, you know, uh, from my place where I'm living from three years ago. I just really yeah. don't, you know, neither do you. So the first I, apartment I really remember living at uh, was a place out in Flatbush that you've been to, obviously. Uh and I lived there for 20 years. And the only thing that ever really happened was that strange incident that we talked about where someone knocked on the uh, the French doors of my bedroom and nobody was home. Right. You know, that was the only thing that ever happened there that was like unusual. And I lived there for 20 years. And then I, I had several apartments after that once I moved out. Nothing happened at those apartments. It seems almost that it's specifically confined to your mother's side of the house, uh, of the family on 68th Street, and your father's side of the family on um, at this other building, and then some other locations out in Staten Island. But basically, a lot of our stories revolve around those two places, which are let me see if I can get my math right about 23 blocks away from each other. Right. And that's where the majority of the stories that, at least that we've talked about on the podcast, that's where they've happened. And you and I have lived in plenty of other places and things like that just don't happen. They happen at those two places. And yeah, because even my son, some like when we moved into our new house you know, on Staten Island, because he, he had had some experiences at 68th Street and... Yeah. When we moved to Staten Island, and it's an old house. It was built in 1917. People died in the house. Um, and he would ask me, like, anything happened here? I was like, no. Like, I, like, Laura goes to Maine for two weeks every summer, and I'm here by myself every night. And I, you know, I'm not afraid. I don't. I never get the feeling I'm being watched. I never get that, like, hair on the back of your neck that I did at 68th Street. 
Yeah. Uh, and you'd think, if anything, I would have it in this old, rundown house on Staten Island. Yeah. That's just this big empty house versus an apartment where my grandparents live downstairs and there's neighbors right. on either side. You know, wow. you're just cramped in Brooklyn. And uh, you knew everybody. Like, you knew everybody uh, on that block, across the street. I mean, yeah, it was a back, big extended family. Right. Back then, it was just everybody knew each other. People didn't move around like they do these days. These days, yeah. it's two-year leases or one-year leases. And right. just as you get to know somebody, they're gone. You know, back yeah. then, it was just families who'd been there for generations. And mm -hmm. so we knew everybody. Yeah, block parties, the whole nine yards. Right, right. So it's why why would I, you know, be more frightened? Again, if even if I'm not experiencing anything, but just that feeling of being watched, that feeling of like, yeah, something's here with me. Why yeah. would I have that feeling more in an apartment than I would like in an old house? Yeah, that's Staten Island that's been there for forever, and you know, it's, it's just weird. And and again, I'm not saying it's not possible. It could be a lot of this could be psychological, and I, I'm always open to that, but. Of course. You know, you, you just go by sheer numbers and where did we experience things? And not just you, right. not just me, friends from high school, right? relatives, you know, people who didn't know what was going on there. Like, I'm never staying right. here again, you know, right. like what is going on there? Um, and why that time period? I, I do wonder that too. Like, is it something to do with our age? or what was going on in our lives that 16 to kind of 26 or 28, like were we more susceptible to it back then? I don't know if you have thoughts on that or. I do have some thoughts on that. I mean, they, they often say that sometimes these things start around puberty, you know, the, that is a very common thing. Uh, another thing completely separate from that is house renovations, things like that. You know, any sort of big change, whether it's isolated to the human body, obviously puberty, lots of change, or renovations to an old place, another form of, of change. Um, that's That seems almost to stir things up. Are we more susceptible uh, when, you know, we're on the verge of becoming adults? You know, it was high school. It was college. It was right after college, you know first jobs and first apartments and things like that. And, you know, I think for the first part of our lives and the first 10 years and the last 10 years, I don't think there's been a whole lot. I mean, there's been a couple of things here and there, but definitely not. And like I said, isolated, maybe because of the place, you know, setting time and place. Uh, we happen to be living in, at those places um, during those years of our lives. And that's when the stuff really happened. And thankfully, neither one of us live in those locations anymore. <laughs> We're very grateful for that. And then stuff, you know, a couple things here and there, you know, I'll mention some other things at some point, you know, when I, if you'll have me back on the show. Of course. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, I'm grateful to not be around that. I don't even want to say it again to uh, be around that fill in your own word. I'm not going to say it. I'm glad not to be ha not having to visit you at 68th street or having to go home to where I used to live. You know, I don't feel those ways here where I live now, just like you, you don't feel like you're being watched. I felt like I was being watched when uh, at 68th street and when that, I don't want to offend it <laughs> if it knows. <laughs> uh, when that doll was in my apartment, that's exactly how I felt too. Yeah. You know, and if, if we can change the tone a little bit, you sure. Know, like uh, I always think of that commercial that the Ghostbusters did. Do you have <laughs> feelings of dread in your attic or basement? You know, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's exactly what it was. I know like it was, I, we love that movie and it's really funny, but feelings of dread like you're being watched it's like what the hell but it is a very real thing that happened in both of those locations and my friend jimmy so jimmy hi if you're watching jimmy bricks uh he had he had said something once to describe this he said it, it it's like walking into a party that you weren't invited to and like just that feeling like when everybody kind yeah. of turns around and looks at you and like who are you and right. what are you doing here yeah and just that 
not that you're scared, not that you feel threatened, but it's just like that that awkward, uncomfortable, that, like, oh yeah, I'm not supposed to be here. And, yeah, like I should and, go home. Right. And Jake mentioned this to me, like, because he just started the new school year, you know. Yeah. And he was saying he went, they changed the schedule one day, you know how they do in high school. And sure. he, he didn't get the, the memo, I guess. You know, he went to the wrong classroom, the right classroom, but the wrong time of day. Oh. And he walked in and he's like walking to his seat, you know, and then he's realizing he's not recognizing most right. of the kids in the class. He's not recognizing right. the teacher. And he's just kind of like, oh boy, I, you know, and yeah. it's not, you don't, you're not fearing for your life. You're not scared. You're not, you know, but there's that discomfort of like, oh, I, I don't belong here and I got to leave. And yeah, that's a lot of what I used to feel at like 68th street. And yeah. again, you and I kind of just, you know, talked about this and discussed this of just being watched and like that you're not alone and just yeah. um, like, who else is here with me? Uh, exactly. And you know, me, uh, I, I have no problem describing myself as an introvert. I embrace it. You know, I enjoy isolation and my time alone, you know, just with my thoughts or music or writing or whatever. Uh, I didn't, ne I never wanted to be alone, at, especially at 68th Street. Uh, there were times where like you, you went to the bathroom and I was in your room because we were listening to music and I'm like, I don't want to be here. And I'm like, I would hear a little something here or there. I'm like, oh God, here we go again. <laughs> um and I remember you would talk about, you would say almost the same things about being at my place. You know, like you didn't want to go there either. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, mm -hmm. weird stuff. And and yeah, like really tied to the locations. And yeah. it, it's hard to say, like, if, if it's our age, because, yeah, we've been, I mean, I've been out of the 68th Street place now seven years and i've been out eight years i think from the other place yeah so yeah. uh and yeah i really i have one or two little instances of things that happened in my staten island house where i was like oh that's worth noting yeah um but not that like you said feelings of dread or, or yeah. you know uh feelings of being watched it was just kind of a a quick subtle thing and you're like oh what was that and, you know, maybe it was my imagination. Maybe it wasn't, you know, something from outside and, and you take note of it and it's, it's an interesting story, but it's not something that I really consider part of, of what we talk about here on the show, as far as personal experiences where, you know, like we used to say, when we were investigating the paranormal, like it went, you know, when in doubt, throw it out. Like if you just do not know, yeah. uh, and I've mentioned this before, like if I wake up, and I feel like I heard something or saw something, I throw it out. Cause like you said yeah. earlier, like waking dream or sleep paralysis, yeah. or you just, exactly. and maybe you actually did see a ghost, but you have to throw it out. Cause you're half asleep. And yeah. it, given the two options, are you seeing a ghost or are you still dreaming? 99.99999% you're still dreaming. So yeah. you got to throw it out. Your but, mind is still in that state of REM, which is a light, a light phase of sleep. You know, you're right. not in deep sleep. So the things that you actually hear can be affected, can affect the dream and sort of vice versa. You hear something in the dream and you think you're hearing it for real, but it's only in the dream, you know? Right. And that happens a lot. People fall asleep with the TV on or whatever, and, and yeah. they start dreaming about what's on TV and, and it works in the reverse where you can wake up and your brain is still kind of dreaming and you think you're hearing this or you think you're seeing it. And so it could, it could be really confusing. So that that's why for me, anything that kind of happens in that middle ground, if I'm just waking up or just falling asleep, I throw it out. It's if I know I'm wide awake, you know, there's a big difference between half asleep and like, you know, but being in your bathroom, brushing your teeth, getting ready for bed. Like at that point you hear something or see something, it's much more likely yeah. that you did. Um, but yeah, anytime there's witnesses or corroborating evidence like that, it's it's just far more fascinating, but far far creepier because like yeah. we all heard this. What was that dancing out in the living room? Yeah, that's... the first story that I told you in uh, episode seven, I think it was. Yeah, about um, the shadow person mm -hmm. that was at this apartment. 
you know, and I said that I just went to, I just went to lie down, turn off the lights. I was fully awake. It is super, super hot. Uh, I was fully awake, even though I was trying to go to sleep, but so fully awake. Um, and then the stories, the two incidences that I had at 68th street was sleeping over again, couldn't sleep wide awake. And, you know, with the first one, my girlfriend thought that somebody was in the room, even though she was asleep. Like she picked that up and like, I felt it, I felt it before she said anything. And that's why I said, is it across, uh, is it diagonal from us? And she said, yes. Uh, but this, this last, this latest story where we all reacted for souls reacted for individuals you know whatever you want to call us for mammals reacted and we're like what the hell is that and nobody was willing to move to investigate <laughs> you know we were following the rules of uh of horror movies let me go i'll be right back right go investigate <laughs> the strange noise. yeah you don't do that and we didn't none of us man or beast human yeah. i should say yeah I said. <laughs> you're canceled uh but yeah, I it it again, it's one of those things where people not in the moment are gonna say, Why didn't you do X, Y, or Z? Why didn't you take out your camera and film it? Why didn't yeah. you go and investigate? You know, no, you know, if I'm seeing an eight foot tall hairy man in the woods, the last thing I'm doing is reaching for my phone. You know, I'm I'm worried about getting there out of there alive. And same thing with this. Like you're hearing what sounds to be like your girlfriend's doll dancing on the floor with the castanets going like do yeah. a little dance and you know and dance into the music in the doll's head i am not saying that's what happened i'm saying that's what it sounded like right and that's just freaky enough as it is yeah by itself right i mean and four four people heard it, it wasn't just yeah. me we were all awake so a very disquieting experience that yeah i told you about the first thing when it happened 21 years ago and then so so just before we close what what, what is your theory on the doll because you, you did mention a story about when she was little your girlfriend and her grandmother had sort of yeah. put the kavorka on this, <laughs> this other person and um how do you think that relates to the doll no wait a second isn't the, yeah, kavorka the lure of the animal the lure of the animal i've been watching too much seinfeld lately i'm sorry <laughs> Jake, Jake just got into it, so it's we're watching the Maloikia, all the... isn't it? The Maloikia, the evil eye. Yes, yes. I... Yeah. <laughs> Another quote from Seinfeld. All, all, my, all my knowledge of high culture comes from Bugs Bunny cartoons. Yeah. Um, Seinfeld is a great show. Seinfeld is awesome. But uh, yeah, the Maloikia. Well, there was a creepy doll on that show, too. What, it was like a, a ventriloquist doll. Oh, Mr. Marbles. <laughs> and then... And then the... <laughs> And then the oh one we God. we just watched this one the other day. It was uh, when George was dating, engaged to Susan, and she had a doll that looked just like Mrs. Costanza, yeah, his mother, yeah. And it's like yelling at him in the in the. He's yeah. imagining it like yelling at him in the diner, and and I was yeah. thinking about that earlier. I was trying not to laugh because you're talking about this yeah. doll, and I'm just thinking <laughs> about the 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 Mrs. Costanza doll. Yeah, uh, no, it wasn't anything like that. Yeah, so I'm sorry we got a little off track there, but the doll, like, w w what do you think? Like, what was the doll's deal? Well, you know, that that's where it's possibilities. I don't know. Um, I didn't, none of us saw anything. We, that night, we only heard what I relate to you. Uh, I also relate to you what I felt. Now, what she told me was that her grandmother was into non-traditional religions, whatever that means. And again, not a judgmental thing. Um, but she was curious about accessing the powers of the universe. What, you know, whatever that means. Um, uh, you want to call it witchcraft. You can potentially call it witchcraft, uh, herbal healing, channeling of energies, anything you want to call it. Um, I never got a lot of details, but from the sound of it, that's what it was about. So I know that her grandmother was interested in those things. I know that her grandmother was the original owner of the doll. Uh, I also know, oh, I just, re, uh, I just remembered this, that 
before she died, she actually wanted to pass the doll on specifically to Victoria. Um, but her instructions were only when she's ready. And that's why um, the parents never gave her the doll because she didn't mention it. So they were waiting for her to say something about it. Interesting. Right. And that's when that's when they got it out of storage and they gave they presented it to her. Uh, and of course, she was also she was close with her grandma, even though she lost her when she was young. Uh, and she was also interested in the mysteries of the universe. You know, sometimes people pursue science to try to understand the universe. Sometimes people pursue religion to understand it. Um, sometimes it's traditional religion and sometimes it falls into the area outside of traditional religion. Um, and that's why I said that she was very interested in Wicca and she was interested in crystals and herbal healing and energies and things like that. Uh, so very much in that way influenced by her grandmother. Now, can any of those things affect the the uh, the natural world, you know, the here and now, physical objects? Um, there have been a lot of people who have investigated this sort of thing. Uh, and even like even in traditional religions, like, for instance, Christianity, you can have a priest bless anything you know you could bring your pet have the priest on a particular day the and the priest blesses the pets a, a special um thing that they do i think every year mm -hmm. even in the catholic church uh rosary beads crosses you can bless anything you know you can bless holy water and then carry it around with you you can do all sorts of things so can you in access the powers of the universe whatever you want to call them and imbue an object with that power now i'm sure if you're watching this podcast or if you're listening to this podcast you you may believe that that is possible and i'm sure that there are millions of people in the world who believe the same thing and you know i have to say in the same breath that there's probably millions of the people in the world who believe that's garbage that that is impossible uh when using science uh when you're dealing with things like electricity when you're dealing with things like um atoms and molecules what happens if you split an atom i mean the unseen world people have been trying to explain the unseen world for as long as there's been mankind humankind civilization you know whether it's through science or whether it's through religion I'm not going to say that I understand any of it. You know, I'm I'm just trying to sort out my own life, you know, and uh, be happy and be happy with my family and make sure that everyone's healthy and happy. You know, that that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, and I can just say that there are possibilities in infinite space and time. There are possibilities. Isn't that from Star Trek? I think? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, I really do believe that. So I don't know what created the sound. I just know what it sounded like. What do you think? Uh, you know, this is one of those stories that I, I've known for a long time. I've, I've thought about from time to time. Uh, I honestly don't know, you know, because it's, it doesn't sound like a residual sort of haunting where it's just, as you mentioned earlier, that there it's a magnet. Is it playing back a sound or is it playing back an event? And you guys are all just hearing it like a giant tape recorder. Yeah. Like uh, uh, you mentioned this, that when you were in my apartment all those years ago and we heard the knock on the, on the glass of the French door. And then I went outside and I replicated that sound with my own key. It's like, did we somehow hear me doing that like two minutes before? Right. Was I the source of that sound and we just heard it out of sequence? Right. Is so possible? Yeah. And is this just like some preternatural phenomenon that we just don't understand yet that is completely natural, but it's just completely unknown to us and, and we just don't understand it yet. So it's yeah. a ghost or it's paranormal. Right. Um so yeah, I've thought about that and I'm like, well, it doesn't sound residual because the doll would never be dancing. It's a doll. It's an inanimate right. object. Exactly. Uh, so it has no energy to imprint on the earth. 
to be replayed. So kind of chuck that out. Um, is it a hallucination? You know, okay, if it were just you and you're freaked out by this doll and you're home alone one night and there's no one else sure. there and, you know, whatever state of mind you're in and your brain just kind of plays the castanets for you and you say, ah, fuck, <laughs> it's, it's out there dancing. I can tell you every time uh, I put in The Exorcist, which I will only ever do like uh, on a bright Sunday, <laughs> early afternoon, like I start hearing things. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm turning this off. Right. And and again, yeah, that's mind of the powerful thing. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. So power of suggestion. Sure. Uh, but you throw that out because you have a dog, a cat and a girlfriend who are all responding to it as well and hearing it and you're yeah. you know you're talking to victoria the next day and like you're both confirming exactly what you both heard yeah uh so you throw that out it's not a hallucination it's not residual you know you're left with some disquieting alternatives possibilities that, possibilities yeah. that this doll came down and started dancing and was moving on its own volition highly unlikely but yeah. You know, you start eliminating these other possibilities. Uh, so I don't know, you know, because for me, I, I I, feel like for a doll to get up and dance like that requires a ton of energy. And if you believe that oh, the gotcha. paranormal is energy and you're hearing footsteps, you're hearing a knock on the door, you know, and that's it. Like, you know, you hear the knock and it's, it's, it's not, again, like the movies, it's not poltergeist where doors are flapping and... Yeah stuff's flying through the air it's it's if there's this expenditure of energy it's enough for a knock on the door it's enough for two or three footsteps and that's it to animate a doll and to move the castanets and, and just have things moving and making sound requires so much energy uh so it's it's difficult for me to believe that that's what was happening but what else could it have been, you know? And again, like you mentioned earlier, is it the TV from upstairs, you know, a neighbor's apartment? Uh, what are the odds that they're watching something that sounds like that? And again, I feel like most animals, they, 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 once they're living in a space, you know, once they're there for a week or so, they know all the sounds now. Again, like you said, yeah. first day, the cat's going to be like, oh, what's that? That's just the heat. Oh, what's that? That's just the neighbor across the hall. Once they know the sounds, they're going to know that it's just the TV upstairs. They're going to know that it's just the neighbor across the hall. They're not going to, you know, sit up at attention and look at you guys and, and have that. And you know when your animal is curious and when your animal is scared. Yeah. Uh, and and that's like what I was saying about Belle earlier. Like, I knew she was scared. She was growling at something. This wasn't just, oh, I heard something. She was like, there's something there and I don't like it. And I'm not coming off this bed. Same so. with, with my two animals. And it's interesting uh, with dogs, especially pack animals, like they understood. And uh, from how I know that cats are not pack animals, but um, I think that both cats acknowledged us as the leaders. They looked directly at us for guidance. It's like, what should we do? Right. And no one got off the bed. No one made a sound. We just all sort of looked at each other and like, let's hope it stops <laughs> yeah so on, honestly i don't know what to make of it because the, the one thing that it sounds like it should be just seems so impossible impossible yeah but i'll be the first else? to say it it sounds impossible right but what else could it be but that's, that's what i heard yeah that's what you heard it's very distinct it's you never heard it before you never heard it after no nope. uh so what was it you know, it's just, it's just one of those stories that we have and people can make of it what they will. Right. Um, and yeah, if anybody listening or watching has any ideas, leave it down in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts, your theories, because we would like to know what it is too. Yeah. <laughs> it's certainly some... odd and untold. Now, it well, now it's told. Now it's told. told. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an awesome story. It's one that always kind of stuck with me, freaked me out um more for the right now thinking about it yeah it's a little creepy uh because yeah the implications are, are are creepier than the actual story i think you know yeah. the story is just you're just hearing stuff you know but like what are you hearing and yeah. and that's it's the implication more than what you actually saw again right. if you had seen the doll moving that's a whole other story but that is a completely different story 
the implication right. is that it's out there dancing for nobody and you guys are just kind of in your bedroom trying to go to sleep and like yeah the fucking dolls out there dancing and uh Great. this is this is our life now <laughs> our life we're trapped in this room and we can't go anywhere until yeah. we're allowed to yeah it is um a very particular sound that we cannot explain yeah very strange w weird experience um so yeah thank you for sharing i do appreciate it because again this is one i was never even going to ask you to share so i'm glad you volunteered it so, yeah i don't i don't i don't think we should ever talk about it again after this no no documented we, and it's documented it's there that. we'll yeah. leave it at that that's enough that's enough but we we definitely have more stories you have more stories we have some yeah. more shared stories and we'll definitely have you on again great um, thank you and uh tell more stories that are odd and untold until we tell them <laughs> until we tell them okay. until we tell them all right thank you brother. all right man well thank you for coming on and uh for me. anytime and we'll see you soon all right take care all right bro take care bye bye all right everybody thanks for joining us again i want to thank my friend john for coming on and sharing that really spooky story uh again it's the implication is almost scarier than the actual experience i mean hearing it is weird but trying to imagine what was making those sounds even spookier. And again, that his girlfriend experienced it and his dog and his cat just adds a little bit of credibility and, and creepiness to it because they all experienced it. So who knows what it was. If you guys have any ideas of what he heard or similar experiences, let us know in the comments below. If you want to share your story on the show, email me at jason at odd and untold .com. I'll put the email address in the description below. And until then, we'll see you next week, everybody. Stay tuned. Listen to Moonlight by Riversend at the end of the show. Awesome song. Thanks again, guys, for letting us use it. And we'll see everybody next week. Rock and roll. Never shows my fingers. Rock and roll. Moonlight.